we talk about MVPs with startups, with products, minimum viable product. That's okay, but there's actually a more helpful concept. Not having investors meant I own 100% of the business. I still do. I mentioned this on the last episode that I would follow up on this one point that I thought was so valuable. It was from Kevin Kelly, co-founder of Wired. He was on Invest Like the Best, and he said, it's better to prototype your life versus plan your life because planning assumes that you're perfect. We don't know if we know exactly what we want. This is the reason why you would prototype your life, your product, your business, instead of drawing up a specific plan. Obviously, I'll link to that episode in the show notes. I wanted to dive into this concept of prototyping versus planning. This also relates to vision boards, which are like the millennial woman's favorite thing to do every New Year's. Let's go vision boarding, girls. I have what's called a non-specific manifestation style. You might too. The idea of a vision board is having a very concrete plan of I want this exact thing within the next year or however long. Some people do better having a general sense of I want to feel this way in a few years versus I want to be at this villa or I want to have this particular type of business or whatever is on the board. And I'm one of my only friends that doesn't like vision boards. It doesn't align with me. If it works for you, great. But this goes to the whole Kevin Kelly concept of prototype versus plan. When I started Wealth Voice in 2020, I didn't know if it was the right way to do it, but my gut said, don't take investors, bootstrap it, see if you can make it work on this is your allowance. Like I gave myself an allowance of here's your budget to get this thing launched. Validate the idea. And everyone's obsessed with getting investors, but you shouldn't do that necessarily, especially if it's a B2C product. Mine wasn't. It was a B2B app. But not having investors meant I own 100% of the business. I still do. Having fewer cooks in the kitchen when we were building Wealth Voice. In some ways, it might have slowed me down, but I don't have to answer to anyone as far as investors telling me what to do with the app. And that was a good fit. But at the time I was doing it, a lot of people said, oh, why don't you get investors and your valuation could be X, Y, Z. And it never felt right. Just like vision boards don't feel right. I did a video on human design. Basically, there's five types of energy systems. Everybody's one of them. It's not woo-woo. If you're into personality tests like Myers-Briggs, this is actually a much more in-depth, better more useful framework, far more useful. I happen to be a projector, inconsistent energy system. I also happen to have what's called a non-specific manifestation style. You might too. If you've ever felt like making a very specific plan doesn't feel right, and maybe you'd rather have a somewhat nebulous general sense of where you want to go, or you're more inspired by other things than like, these are the plans and this is the timeline. Everyone's obsessed. The 4 a.m. club, get up early and manifest this and do your fasting, do your morning journal, the routine. Nothing about that works for me. If I were in a routine like I was when I worked in corporate, I would have never done anything creative or taken a risk. So you don't have to make a specific plan necessarily. Working on a prototype is great. We talk about MVPs with startups, with products, minimum viable product. That's okay, but there's actually a more helpful concept, which is just validate the idea before you even build the MVP. And this comes from Jay Cornelius, Nine Labs, and he has a book called Loops, which is really about creating products. What is it to prototype a product? How do you do that correctly without wasting time or money? An easy way to validate an idea before even spending money or time building the thing is kind of do a fake out like Buffer did with the landing page of, would you like to sign up for this social media scheduling tool? It's $9.99 a month. You can auto schedule all your posts out to all the social networks. Would you like to sign up for that? Click here if you're ready to pay. And however many people click, they're like, okay, people want this. Let's go build it. Versus I'm going to take investors' money or my own money, build the thing before I know that people would actually sign up for it. Or you can do surveys, but do you know for sure that they're actually going to put their credit card number in for the thing you're building? What I did with Wealth Voice was I found a way to build a super simple version and get some customers on. I said, use this, see if you like it. Tell me if it's useful. Tell me what you would rather have it do or if it's great how it is. Then I'll go finalize building it. I didn't have investors. I didn't need them. Why would I? You shouldn't. And especially now with AI. I mean, this was 2020. Now with AI, you could use no code. You could build anything. You don't need $200,000 to build your MVP. That's, That's like five years ago. It's totally different now. So 
there's no reason to have so much bloat. And everybody, I think this is going to change culturally with the idea of it being laudable to have a ton of money invested and all these series and funding rounds and like, do you even need a seed? I mean, are you at a point where you're not solvent enough to build a simple version of an app with your own money? If you believe in it that much, why are you taking investors' money on day one out the gate before you've even built it? That's later. That's my opinion. And my opinion is vision boards aren't very helpful. It might be great for you. It might make sense for your app. And the point of that is advice is so prescriptive and one size fits all nowadays. Everyone's like, you got to do this morning routine if you want to be a successful entrepreneur or this is how you do a startup. You take investors and then look at what happened to Nasty Gal. Like Sophia Amoruso was on Diary of a CEO. I thought it was such a great episode. I'll link to that in the show notes. And she said, I had no idea what I was doing. My company was at a valuation. I think it was like 500 million. And she said, I didn't even know how to do a P&L. I was 22 and we were overvalued. And after we got this huge round, tens of millions of dollars, and within a year, it didn't work out. And she's wonderful in the way she describes it. She's very authentic and honest. And she's like, I didn't know what I was doing here. I didn't have good advisors here. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. She admits it. It happens all the time. So many companies have so much investment and they never validated the idea. What? It's simple. I mean, use like SurveyMonkey or Typeform. Is this something you would use? This is what we're thinking of charging. Would you pay that for it? Great. Would you like to be a beta tester? We'll give it to you for free for a few months or forever if you just give us feedback. Like, There's easy ways to validate these things. You get so married to the idea of what you're building because emotionally you are involved and it's almost like you're in a relationship and you're like, I don't want to give up on this person. I, I think it could be great. I see the potential. But sometimes it's that sunk cost fallacy of, you know what, maybe the thing I built isn't what the market wants or needs, or maybe I need to change it or upgrade it. What you want to do is to have something that's so valuable, unique, fantastic, or better than what's out there that people would feel stupid saying no. And that's like $100 million offers, Alex Ramosi, et cetera. What Kevin Kelly said on Patrick O'Shaughnessy's podcast at the 13, 15 minute mark. Now, this is my Evernote. This is how I do this show. We don't know if we know exactly what we want. Plans are ideal and perfect. We are not those things. Prototyping makes it real and exposes imperfections. You could do this with an app, with business, with relationships, with your life plans, with do I want to move to that city? What if I could prototype it instead of buying a house or moving all my stuff there. I could do an Airbnb little experiment for a month, see if I like the vibe before you go put all your chips on that bet. Reality is not perfect or certain ever. It never works out how you think. Rarely can we predict what will make us happy in the future. Like this goes back to Rory Sutherland, alchemy. The most successful creative business ideas came not from a spreadsheet, but from alchemy, from a little bit of magic. Things that when presented, seemed nuts. Look at Disney. Did you know that James Cameron was a truck driver for making the Terminator movie? And he's like, hey guys, let me take this over. I got it, I got it. He had that creative passion. He's like, I know what to do. I know what to do to make this successful. So when you have that inner voice, that calling of like, I know how to build that app, let's do it. Go for it. But just prototype it. Just like technology or robotics, we don't see how people end up really using it until we put it in the wild with a prototype. You're the same. I'm the same. You have to put it out into the wild. Lean startup. Keep it lean, small, and inexpensive while you're prototyping it. Give it a chance. Experiment. Don't make a solid plan or a giant investment when it's an experiment. It's a test. This goes for anything you do in your life and in business as well. So... Bottom line, prototype don't plan. Thanks to Kevin Kelly for that inspo. If you are enjoying this show, make sure that you rate and review on Spotify, thumb it up, subscribe on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash Emily Binder. If you're listening to the audio version, we're doing video. Most of these new episodes are going to have a video version. It's emilybinder.com slash podcast. Links to everything. Rate, review, subscribe. Most popular episodes. Playlist on Spotify. You can binge. Most of those episodes average five minutes long. The show has been going like four years at this point. Check it out. That's all for now, guys. Look, I'm wearing a crop top. <laughs>
I'm like a Gen Z. I got a crop top. I'm going to the Austin FC football match tonight. So I thought I'll make myself look like a Gen Z in Austin. 36 here. I um I tried out that aging filter on TikTok. I think it was pretty accurate. It's scary, but it's like, that is old, Emily. It's EB Silver. Silver edition. Time is flying. Thanks for listening. See you next time.